right. Well, I'm going to speak about um, a comparison between the effects of using an orgone energy accumulator on mice with cancer uh, and uh, the treatment of similar mice, not by myself, but by a colleague, uh, using uh, intentional healing methods. Uh, I presented this material, first place let me say that uh, I very much appreciated uh, Dr. Lesniak's talk because it gives such a broad range of, uh, especially in the review, of uh, what's going on in this field. Uh, and we know basically very little about how healing takes effect. I reviewed prior to coming here 35 books and papers written over the last 10 years by uh, uh, researchers and healers, physicists, physicians, and so forth. And uh, besides the, uh, an attempt to utilize quantum mechanical theory to explain some of these strange effects, these anomalous effects, uh, there is very little that's satisfying to uh, someone who really wants to understand how is this is what takes place here. So uh, what I want to present today is just a little bit of information to help us get a little bit into what takes place when some kinds of healing take place. Now the organ energy accumulator was invented by Wilhelm Reich. Uh, as uh, in the course of his own research into uh, human emotions. And uh, through over 30 years of work in biology and physics uh, and human emotions, uh, he developed this accumulator, this thing, which is really a, a passive device, ostensibly. It consists of multiple layers of non-metallic and metallic materials with a metal material on the inside. And that's very easy to see here. Uh, this is the inside part of it. This is metal, non-metal, metal, non-metal. Non and the outside uh, is stipulated has to be of a non-metallic material. Now, Reich demonstrated many interesting anomalous phenomena that take place on a physical level within such an enclosure, but he also uh, did some studies on the treatment of mice with cancer. And uh, what he used were uh, animals with uh, spontaneous tumors. And that study was followed by myself, following Reich's death, using animals with spontaneous tumors and transplanted tumors, all mammary tumors. And then there was a group in, uh, in South America that did another study using uh, a kind of transplanted tumor. So, let's see, where do I point this? Is this, yeah. In all of those experiments I just mentioned, the healing capabilities of the person doing the study, including myself, was unknown. That is, all of us, as far as I can tell, certainly I know for myself, and I know Reich's literature very well, and I knew the papers from the people in South America, none of them had any idea that their intention was playing any role in what the results might be. However, in all of us, there was an intense desire that there would be some kind of healing outcome. Now, what we found was that, or at least what I found, was that, excuse me, when you dissect a mouse that's been treated, and the, all these animals were in an accumulator uh, put in the center of this box uh, for usually an hour each day. Animals that were treated, this is what their innards looked like when they were dissected at the end of the uh, treatment period after they had died. These are the untreated mice. We used uh, suitable controls, 
they were put in a box and uh, for the same period of time and then returned to their cages. So they were removed from their cages for the same period of time as the, treated, uh, as the accumulator treated animals. So you can see there's an enormous difference. Excuse me. The blackness here is due to toxins. Mice with cancer, when they die, really smell bad. They stink. They're full of toxins. It's just black material. You examine it under the microscope. It's a mixture of bacteria and, uh, and breakdown products of tissue. Uh, and you don't get any of that in the animals that were treated. And these are the results. In the accumulator tests, we can see that these are the treated animals, and you can see that they lived longer in all four experiments that were done. This was Reich's, this was mine, this was mine, and this was the South American group. And the statistical analysis reveals that in practically all cases there was highly significant uh, results. And uh, ES stands for the effect size. Now, the results we can say was there was a definite prolongation of life, but what I'm interested in more today is this, idea, this finding that there was an intense inflammatory reaction in all of these animals. That is, the tumors uh, would develop and at a certain point, just before the animal died, the area around the tumor would become swollen with, uh, with fluid, red blood cells, strong vascular reaction, and then this would burst and the animal would die. Most often that was a sequence. So there was an intense inflammatory reaction taking place in every single case of the animals that were treated with the accumulator compared to the controls. Now, you may recognize this fellow. He's sitting in our audience today. <laughs> I had presented this data on the accumulator several years ago to the, uh, to the society. Uh, and following that, I was just, I heard Bill speak and describe his experiments with identical mice that I had used, but, but Bill wasn't using, uh, this is Bill Bankston, by the way, for those of you who don't know. Uh, Bill was using identical mice that I had used in my research, and he wasn't using an organ accumulator, but he was using a method of healing that he had learned from someone else. Uh, and This is the Bengston method, if I may call it that. Uh, it involves you working with students, and as Bill himself learned, I assume, from uh, the person who taught him, it involves teaching and learning how to do very rapid mental imaging, and then putting one's hands around the cage of the mice to be treated, and then an accelerated image cycling. And uh, Bill wonders if this is what does it, that is this methodology, or was something passed on from his teacher to himself and from himself to his students, whom he was also able to train to do healing using this method. Do I describe this fairly well, Bill? Good, okay. So, now the remarkable thing about Bill's study was that the mice who developed these, these were, they were transplants, weren't they? Transplanted tumors. This is something I'd never seen before and I'd done a lot of this kind of research. All the mice in Bill's study, the tumors, there was an intense inflammatory reaction, the release of something called uh, tumor necrotic factor in which the whole area gets blackened. We saw, we saw strong inflammatory reactions, but nothing like that. And then it's as if the tumor imploded and was gone, and the lesion healed itself. And the animals 